Hello, SnapCon, and welcome into the top eight of the tournament. It's GC Jesse, G's James, however you pronounce it, is right out there in TV land, and my good friend, Super Tech God. Of course, how you guys doing? You guys excited? This is top eight, baby. Very nice. Now we've got uh, Husky Puppies versus Hannah Cat Cafe, and I think uh, it's a little server, surfer versus Thena Hawk, maybe, uh, according to my notes here. But I'm excited. I'm excited. I don't know about you, Ken. Yeah, I'm pumped. I mean, looking at the Carlos here, as you can see, we got the puppies here running out. His Carlos looks like he's going to be running this surferless. Um, that list looks pretty good, especially Copycat. What a great card. Um, Hope Summers, Red Guardian. And of course, Cassandra Nova, these are some amazing cards, all three costs, giving Surfer that wonderful help he needs to make him pull off this victory. Yeah, I love it. And then Hannah's Cat Cafe coming in here. We can see the two deck lists brought into the tournament. Now, uh, according to my notes, I think we're expecting the Thena Hawk. Uh, love to see the Iron Man, of course, Rock Slide, Korg, Kitty Pride, and of course, yes, again, Cassandra Nova being just that powerhouse of a three drop that you can slide into really any deck on curve just feels great. I totally agree, man. Juggernaut's also a sleeper that last turn, moving cards out your opponent's lane to win that lane is also satisfying. Very nice, very nice. So we can see our combatants here um, getting ready. And I believe uh, it is just about time to go ahead and get the matches started. They have gotten the signals from staff. They are queuing in to start their match. And uh, we'll see it take off. All right, let's go. Let's get it going. It's going to be the puppies versus the cat. Let's see what happens. Now, uh, Tech, did you play in any pods here? Or? Yeah, I got a, one or two games in. It was a fun time. Yeah. I lost both, though, of course. Yeah, I also did not make it into the, the top cut. Uh, we can see that we've got the hand on top and the hand on bottom. Cord coming in from Hannah's Cat Cafe on turn one. A good curve. Uh, and we can, are we already at two cubes? Just starting off immediately aggressively. Yeah, looks like they're very confident. Let's see what happens here. But Hotel Inferno, one of those locations that really cause problems for your opponent's hand. Ooh, there goes Hope Summers, which is a good card to get destroyed. Yeah, now the, the Forge is active. And, yeah, I was expecting the Brood to come down. Now, from the other side, um, I don't know. What would you run here? Are you... Are you just trying to throw more rocks in, or do you want that Nova on curve? I think you go ahead and put the rock slide down now. Probably on the Abbey. Um, trying to get another card there next turn. Get that extra draw. But you need to fill up your opponent's hand. Get that going so you, in hopes that you pull the Dog Hawk. You're all set. Yeah, and we see that is exactly the play that came down. So a lot of broodlings right in the middle there with Hotel Inferno. Rock slide on the Abbey. Um, Oh, interesting. Okay, that's more of what I was expecting. Uh, a little bit of abs to come down there. And on the other side, I missed the play, but I'm sure it's going to be a good one. Um, like you said, I'd expect a little bit of Abby action here. Someone try to get the extra card draw. And there it is, nice and early. And of course, Abs Man copies the brood and go ahead and get that brood action on Abby, but it's too late. The draw already went to Hannah. Now the cool thing is she did, she did draw what she needed and look what else just came in her hand. This is gonna be very interesting gameplay. Hannah doesn't have priority, so that's not gonna be a problem right now, but it is gonna work out for her later on if she needs to protect those cards. Now they were able to uh, know the deck list ahead of time. I don't think they knew which deck they were going to go against, but uh, both the decks being completely unique cards, if you have a good memory, you probably immediately identify what your opponent has. So the normal Battlegrounds kind of closed deck list calculation here of do I just want to see what they have, you can kind of already know that. And... Uh, that's where the calculations really come into play on an open deck list because 
you know that they've seen probably 75% of their deck. Uh, Hannah Cat Cafe got the extra draw off the Abbey. That's very consistent in Marvel Snap, probably only having maybe two cards left in the deck. All right, down comes the Killmonger, and of course we have the Darkhawk, a nice 15 power Darkhawk over on the left. Now, Hannah does not have priority. Copycat goes ahead and steals a wonderful copycat, such a great card. All right, copycat comes down with the surfer. Let's see what happens. Let's see what Hannah can pull off here. Yeah, you see Puppies was really hoping on that draw there, uh, crossing the fingers. Copycat being able to give a little bit of extra information, double checking that to see exactly uh, what card was still there on the bottom, doing a little bit of quick maths to try to figure out what cards are exactly possible for Hannah to draw on now that we know that Copycat did copy some kind of ability and uh, we have, you know, what we know on the board so you can kind of tell puppies is really thinking about it trying to figure out what's in hand what can hannah use and uh all right we'll just see exactly how it plays out the end turn is clicked oh hannah decides to make that change and said nope i don't want to take it don't take that chance i totally get it a good retreat in that first match yeah very good and utilizing the retreat later to um Early in the pod, I, we both retreated. So, like, it happens, especially in the Conquest battle mode styling of Snap. Oh. Oh, that is huge. That was huge. Let's see what happens. Let's see how this plays out. But um, that is why that card is something special. Yeah, you saw the... Uh, yeah, Husky writing notes for chat. Um, absolutely love it. So the question now is like, when do you utilize, you know, the snap? Do you don't want to necessarily do it too early? Husky's deciding not to do it too early, but you know what you have. When do you hit that snap? I think you do it probably around turn four, turn five. Um, this way you already know what's in your hand. You know what your playout's going to be. You don't want it to snap too early. You know what I mean? Then it doesn't work out in your favor. So around turn four, turn five, if you're, you get the cards you need because he's still missing a very important card, I think that's when he snaps. Vibranium Mines being our last location showing up here on turn three. Um, you know, probably Hannah Cat Cafe, very happy to see a Mines right now, but waiting to draw that key card. We see uh, the... Hawkeye come out, two basic arrows coming into hand, a very yeah. new card. And there it is. There goes the snap. You just called it. Turn four, as I said. Now, let's see what happens next. And I like this play, too, uh, coming in as well to just kind of solidify why the snap comes in, I feel, uh, if we see this play out. I think this is a very telltale sign with which location we've decided to play a card down on. Yeah, totally understand that. I think right now they're, they're thinking about it, really trying to figure out how to play this out. I know Hannah's looking for her important combo. She's waiting on that. And of course, Husky feels he got it in the lead. Let's see what happens. And Hannah already retreats after that snap to try to reserve some more cubes. And I, I think that's the right move there. You see the mines down, your opponent snaps. You know that mines is supposed to be favorable for you, and they snap on you. Mm, they got something, they yeah. got something spicy. <laughs> Indeed. That was already a, a, a tall tale sign of what's to come. So they're like, you know what? And it's like, not today. Let's go ahead and retreat there. Smart retreat. We're not in the wonderful um, set of rounds yet where you have to worry about retreating. So this is time to do it. And down comes Kitty Pride. Yeah, nice early Kitty Pride. Going to always be able to fill out that curve or have something to do, powering it up. Um, a turn two forge on curve, very nice. A lot of extra uh, options there in the hand. Four, four. Oh. Carmotage comes up. This is going to be a very interesting location. And a snap comes down right away, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be very interesting. Let's see if they stay in for this. But this definitely helps out both sides right now with Carmotage being that third location. Titan, not so much, but Carmotage is going to be huge. 
Yeah, they both have a really good options to play on to Taj, either this turn or the next turn. It's really going to come down to who utilizes the Taj at the right moment. Um, oh, and Husky is confident. All right, so you got to be careful now because Hannah's about to turn up. <laughs> I don't know if you want to do that, but let's see what happens. And you oh, get play. the Nova versus Nova. Oh, my goodness. And uh, did you see what that copied? Yes, it did. It copied Angela. All right, so let's see. Now he does another one. I mean, this double Cassandra is going to be a problem. Um, these cards are going to come out with so much negative energy. It's not going to be funny. But nonetheless, let's see what happens. Like I said, Carmitage is that location to help everybody out. So let's see what happens next. She's holding on to the kitty, let's see. She's gonna play that. All right, let's go. Turn four, flips over. Abs man copies Cassandra Nova. Cassandra Nova goes down again. We got Rock Slide filling up that deck with four sets of rocks. And of course, we have Kitty Pride coming down, getting that buff. And let's see what the next turn looks like, what the draw is. Okay, both players draw some cards. I'm sure both players didn't get the cards they wanted, but they did draw some good cards. So we gotta hope for that final turn six draw before decisions are made. Let's see what happens. A very interesting match indeed. I gotta say, we're not even in high stakes yet, but it feels very high stakes. You can literally hear at SnapCon in the room, you can hear the twitching, you can hear the thoughts, the patterings of the hands on the legs, really trying to figure out what the play is because we are in the top eight. This tournament has over $1,500 in that prize pool. There is still more donations to come in later, I'm sure, if anybody out there in chat is enjoying this incredible tournament. And there's the retreat on turn six. Uh, I think we're going into high stakes now at about 10 to five. That is correct. And like I said, because the card did not get pulled, it made sense for Hannah to retreat right there. If she got the card she wanted though, however, she would be in a good position. All right, now we got, of course, Central Park coming down, giving everybody extra squirrels, and we know what um, Husky has in his card list. He does have a kill marker, so he could clear the board. Snaps come down nice and early. Oh, boy. They don't want to waste any turns. No time. Let's go. From Raptors to Squirrels, we are here on round four. Not quite to the high stakes, but just the way this has been played. Again, early wow. snaps. Husky decides to take the back out, say, hey, look, next round is high stakes. This is basically a free retreat. Let's get a new hand and go ahead, go into that round uh, five. Now we are starting with two cubes. Here we go in the high stakes, ladies and gentlemen. This is the fun time. This is when things really count. The high stakes, you're going for two regardless of what you do. So let's see what happens. We got Hus Husky Puppies up, Hannah's down, but of course, anything can happen in Marble Snap. It's interesting, they both end up being able to play this turn, thinking it out, really trying to decide, do you want to go for an unrevealed location, hope that it's Sanctum Sanctorum, or hopefully it's not Bar with no name, you know? And it looks like we had an Atlantis play over on left from Husky Puppies with a little bit of a risky play with Korg, again, trying to play into those unrevealed locations. Instead, Wakanda Embassy shows up, basically buffing the hands and being a ruins there after the game. Not really a Bar with no name, not really a Sanctum Sanctorum, so Korg's safe, but didn't get a slight advantage. Yep, so let's see what comes up next. We got that forge coming down right in the middle. We got Kate Bishop of Hook giving her the two arrows she needs. And let's see what that third location looks like. It looks like, ooh, Shuri's lab. All right, that's gonna help a lot of people out here. But of course, we see what Husky got in his hand. He could definitely turn that location off if need be. But of course, Hannah pulled the card that she wanted as well. So this looks like it's gonna be a great first round of high stakes. 
Yeah, I'm just interested if we end up seeing the snap it, and there it is, right as I'm thinking about it, it comes in. Um, again, both folks have really strong hands here. I, I don't know if either one, I, I wouldn't back out. I'd kind of want to see this through. Like, both hands are very good, but I'm also not in the top eight. <laughs> I hear that, G. So if you were in the top eight, if you were sitting there right now, would you be playing this play? Would you put Nocturne over on Cherie's lap? Ooh, nice Cassandra Nova being able to weaken parts of the deck, but not getting as strong as that Nocturne. Um, now you got to say it's, it's turn four. Uh, you probably have a good guess at what turn five is going to be, but how do you play out turn four? Do you utilize any of these arrows that you got from Kate Bishop? Uh, are you trying to keep going with Shuri's lab, uh, considering that you don't have a lot of cards in this deck list that have high base power? They're high power cards like Iron Man, like Dark Hawk, like Angela, but not that base power that Shuri's lab really contends to. Uh, Cassandra Nova being the best card to play there, and it gets pushed out by a Nocturne that may or may not move before the end of this game. Yeah, it's very interesting right now. I think both players have the setup that they need. So it's going to be a very interesting ending. But nonetheless, like I said, sitting in that seat, if I was there, this would be a very interesting way because I probably would have turned off Shuri's lab. But nonetheless, in comes Gwenpool buffing Husky Puppy's hand. And then we got Angela coming down, getting that buff as well. And of course, the basic arrow, which is somewhat Hawkeye. Oh, no, it is Hawkeye at this moment. And of course, look at the draw. Both have phenomenal cards in their hand. What will each player do? I mean, I think that is the, the best play from both sides. Let's see what happens. If they're going to stick to it, they're going to hit that end turn. Wait, there's some thinking going on. Let's see. This is a rough place for Hannah to be at. Four cubes. If you end up retreating, you've only got one left. That's a really tough climb, one to nine. It's not undoable. I've seen reverse sweeps like that happen before, but five games in a row at the bare minimum. Uh, so you really got to make sure that you've played this out, calculating out what your turn six is going to look like after turn five. Turn five over on Husky Puppy's side is an Avs man buffing up the hand again with the Quinpool and Dark Hawk taking hold of Atlantis saying, hey, I can do this by myself. I'm going to get the five power here. All right, this looks very interesting, guys. All right, it seems where we have the final turn coming down. I mean, this is the best play for both sides. Let's see what happens. I think <laughs> it's gonna be a very interesting finish. Let's see, like you said, this is tough. If Hannah loses, that's it. If Husky wins, Hannah's back in this. What's gonna happen next, guys? You guys thinking about it? Let's see. The suspense, all right, the end turn is in on one side. Let's see what the other side has. Okay. Nope, we're still thinking about it. I mean, GC, how do you feel? What do you think the best play here, the best course of action is? I mean, I, if it was me, I probably wouldn't be backing out on either side just because the, the long grind back is so terrifying to me. Uh, so I'd be playing it out. I, you got to think about what's in the deck list, what you haven't seen yet. Can you predict what they're going to want to do um, and play a little bit of protection? The moves come in. The Mystique copies the Dark Hawk after Nocturne changed everything into Bifrost. Rock Slide powering up both the Hawk and Mystique, getting a little extra power from Shuri's Lab and Angela. You've got Red Guardian coming down, getting rid of a basic arrow, not a big deal there. Surfer powering up what he can and taking Shuri's Lab by three power. What a game, guys. What a game. Husky Puppies pull out the victory. GG's, guys. GG's. An absolute stellar performance from both participants getting here into top eight, showing the kind of thinking that you have to put in, the diligence into your turns, making sure you know turn six after turn five. Give it up for these two. All right, we're going to have an interview shortly with, of course, the one and only Husky Puppies. GG's guys, great games. GC, what a matchup, buddy. That was a great match to catch. Yeah, that was, that was incredible. I...
I, I'm sweating because it's like, what would I do in these scenario? And I almost don't even want to call it out, right? Because there's caster's curse and all that kind of stuff. And then it's like, I'm not going to make the best plays. I'm going to see what their play is. But I know like when you're sitting there and it's either retreat on four cubes or stay in for a five cuber, I, I feel like especially when you're up on stage like that, you want to power through. You want to push through and go for that five. And it was so close. Three power. And you saw Husky Puppies changed his play, right? He thought about it, laid it all out, counted it up, and said, I want to recount this. Yeah, and I think that play did it. I mean, him switching it up, putting the Red Guardian in the middle, and, of course, moving Nocturne to turn off the buff that Darkhawk got. And then Surfer on the right, that was it. Great Great job, great game, great matchup. All right, so we're gonna have Husky Puppies come on down and get interviewed with the one GC. GC was great, fun seeing you as always. Really appreciate you. And guys, welcome in Husky Puppies. Thank you, Ken, STG. Guys, super tech god. You know him, you love him. I really loved casting with him. So glad that he was able to be here today, get power on gaming together so that we can have this SnapCon here with all of our members and uh, get me a chance to come up here and cast and get an interview going with our current winner off of the Felicity Stream stage, Husky Puppies. Uh, hey, how's it going? Uh, yeah, feel good to get set up. If you want to use the headphones yeah. and uh, try out the try out the mic. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, oh I was scared. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, Hi. that last. Uh, I mean, so many just real thought-provoking moments in there. Could see you really thinking through it, counting out not just this turn but next turn. And on that last turn. Like, you laid it out, and I was like, I really like this. I like the Guardian going after the Hawk. Try to knock it out because it probably still wants the Atlantis buff. And then you changed it. Why? What, what recalculation? Which number was it that was like, I want to redo this? Okay. So if uh, Hannah is going to stay there, she's doing one of two things to play around me. Either she is going uh, like a kitty to try to uh, eat the Red Guardian hit or something small, or... More importantly, she's either going Juggernaut or Cosmo, both of which are, I believe, ran in her deck. So I was thinking, okay, I almost, this is a thing with me. I'm absolutely terrible about playing around Juggernaut. It's like my worst card to play around. Oh, don't use that against me if you see me on ladder, though. But no, I, I for once in my life, remembered Juggernaut and was like, okay, this actually gets me up to tying there, and I think I can win right. I don't think Hannah will go for right. And uh, I was I read Guardian mid just in case of like Iron Man or something like that. I know that was her other big one because uh, I think the last play, it might have still won. It would have been close. Uh, I, I was a little bit worried about Iron Man mid plus like a, a one drop left just to try to eat the Red Guardian. That could have been predicted. But oh, no! Massive shout outs to to Hannah uh, as well as Starfire for making this hat. Uh, it, is, it has helped me <laughs> calm myself down shockingly well. Because I always get tournament nerves. That's why I mostly play the ladder. Whew, but yeah. Well, you're, you're doing absolutely wonderful here. You got up to the top eight. You're still fighting forward. Um, the hat's helping you calm down. Uh, being here at SnapCon, I'm sure staying hydrated. But other than that, what, what other things are you running? <laughs> what other things are you doing right before that match, right before, like, you, you got to sit there on stage for a minute, right? Get logged in, get your deck set up, and you're sitting there. What in those moments are you running through your head to get ready for the match, to get you into that mindset? Ah, I am trying my best not to think. <laughs> I, I am very good at that. I just go brain off and then I just do one of those. Uh, I was also, before the match started, uh, asking one of, if not the best surfer players in the world, uh, Yo Woody, for some tips. Uh, and he was like, yeah, surfer brood abs is the nuts, you know, especially against Sandman. Hannah didn't end up going with Sandman, but that's why I snapped that, like, turn one, even before the first location revealed, like, oh my god, if I could pick this hand, that would be it. Uh, other than that, just uh, having a good time, you know, looking at my raffle winnings. I, I won the Mean Girls. I went all in on the Mean Girls. There will be an unboxing stream later, you know. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Yeah, it was a very hype moment earlier when you won that. 
uh, absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm looking forward to that, that unboxing. Now, is it, is it for the Twitch followers? Is it the Husky Puppies TTTV? Uh, Husky Puppies 35 on, on Twitch.tv. There it is. There it is. So, guys, you want to see that unboxing, you know where to follow it at. Uh, and maybe maybe unboxing of more uh, SnapCon stuff. You, you get into the trading cards? You got a handful of those? I did, but I have, like, no impulse control, so I just opened them now. Uh, I, like, I, you know, I, I want to give my Twitch viewers a good time, but, like, I don't care about you guys that much. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> Well, there you go. You'll be able to show them what you found uh, for sure. Well, I think that we are probably getting close to uh, maybe making a transition. Yeah. Uh, Can I say a few things? Yes. About the, so the next go ahead. Right. Throw out some uh, last words here and give us some insights into what you're thinking right. on the rest of the bracket. So this is going to be an absolute slugfest of giants up on the main stage. This is Dr. Stink Fartson himself, or Big Baby, uh, as I know him, against Woody. Uh, these guys are friends. I uh, hang out with them a fair bit. They are both very, very skilled players. Uh, honestly, I'm hoping both of them get eliminated now, uh, so I just don't have, to, don't have to face them in, uh, I hope, the finals. I'm going up against KX next. Very solid player. I'm a little bit spooked. I'm a little bit spooked. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to bring against KX, but I'm very excited to see this net next matchup on the names main stage. I don't know Timmy or Rocco all that well, but Rocco is the returning champion. I've heard Timmy faced him uh, last year, and hopefully he's coming back for revenge. I know Timmy had an absolutely wonderful match against Tucker. It went nine rounds down to the absolute wire a mill mirror of like slightly different proportions but it was like i got to see a few glimpses it was beautiful yeah a lot of great talent in this top eight bracket and throughout the entire uh tournaments through the swiss rounds yesterday and the pods uh timmy being that move master from uh the brook land events uh like you said rocco returning champion and uh we got one heck of a headliner on the main stage up here we also have on the power on gaming uh channel the other side of the top eights and we are getting really close to the top four so if you want to see rocco and timmy i'm pretty sure that's on the power on gaming stage and then again woody and um oh i'm i'm brain farting here uh Big Baby or Dr. Stink Fartson. Yeah, there it is. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break and get the stage set up. See you guys soon. This guy's going to get ready for the rest. Going into the top four, we'll see you out there, SnapCon. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 